So in this video we want to briefly discuss the idea of inverse functions and in particular we're going to be interested in the inverse of linear functions. Uh, we've seen functions already, we've seen them displayed in mapping notation, so here I have two different functions in mapping notation. Uh, each, fu each function has a domain, each function has its associated outputs or its range, and we know that each of these are functions because for each of them, each input, the numbers 1 through 4, is associated with exactly one output. So we don't see any input here that's mapped to more than one output. And that's how we know that we have a function. And over here, similarly, we know that this relationship is a function because each input maps to exactly one output. Well, in mathematics, we're interested frequently in whether there is a functional relation that exists that maps the other direction that takes the range of a function and maps it back to the domain. So we're accustomed with the function to have inputs followed by outputs, or another way of saying this is we input x, we output y. What we're interested in is the question of whether there is a function that takes the outputs of a function and then it outputs the original inputs. In other words, we're interested in determining whether there's a functional relationship that takes y as the input and then outputs at the x value that generated it. So in this case, what, what we would be saying is, if I take the arrows, the direction of the mapping, if we take the arrows and reverse them so that the mapping is going in the other direction, do, does that relation represent a function or not? So here I have two functions and I can reverse the direction of the mapping on each of them which I did on this slide. You can see the arrows are now pointing back the other direction. So we're down down here asking the question is there we know there's a relationship that maps back this direction but is there a functional relationship? So we look at the old range and we say hey take the elements in the range and see if you map back in the other direction if they map to exactly one element in the original domain. And if they do, then we have a function and we call that function the inverse function. And we represent the inverse function using this notation. We say f inverse. And then I can give it a, a name just like this function was given the name f. I can call the inverse function g. So f inverse is g. In this case, the, there is a function g that maps the old range or the old outputs back to the old domain or the original inputs. And with a function then we, with an inverse function then we say that the range of the original function f is the domain of the inverse function g or f inverse. So we're swapping the x and the y values. And for this, uh, for this mapping or this function over here, when we reverse the uh, direction of the mapping, what we identify is that, yes, it's a relation, but it's not a functional relation. It's not a function because the, in, the, the old output of seven, if we try to make it the new input, then it maps to two different numbers, the number one and the number three. So in this case, there is an inverse relation, but it's not an inverse function. So that's all an inverse function is, is, is the relation that takes the y values as inputs and maps them to the, the old inputs or the x values, is the relation that reverses the direction of the mapping, is it a function or is it not a function? So graphically, Graphically, here's the, re here's the relation that we have between, uh, between a, a function and its inverse. I'm going to open up GeoGebra, actually. So here I have the line f of x equals uh, 2x minus 2. And, and we know that it's a function because it's a line. We, so we know that lines, linear functions, pass the vertical line test. And right here in red, I have the... Uh, the line y equals x graphed and a an inverse function or an inverse relation 
is just the reflection of the re original relation or function in the line y equal x. So in GeoGebra, I can use the reflection tool right here. I can say reflect about a line. So if I take this function f of x equals 2x minus 2, and I then reflect it in the line y equal x, I get a, a new line that's also a function because it clearly passes the vertical line test. But what I, what I want you to notice is that when I reflect the original function in the line y equal x, that we actually get these points right here. I need to get my pen tool out. These points right here get reflected across the line over to new points. And look at what the ordered pairs are. Input 4, output 3. This line, this point here stays stuck on the lines. It, uh, you get input 2, output 2 is on both lines. Uh, this point here reflected across over to this point, And this is the point zero, 01 this point reflected across over to here and became the point negative two zero this point reflected all the way over to here and became the point negative four uh, negative one and what I want what I want you to notice is that when we reflected this line across the line y equal x what happened is it reversed the x and the y so here uh, had x equal three and y equal 4, well now the y value is in the input position and the x value is in the output position. And that's the case for each of these reflected points. The, when you reflect across the line y equal x, the output becomes the input and the input becomes the output. And that's the hallmark of an inverse function. If we start with an xy, for our function, our inverse function takes the y's as the inputs and outputs the x's. So graphically speaking, in the Cartesian plane, an inverse function or inverse relation is just the reflection of the function or relation in the line y equal x. Because reflection in the line y equal x reverses the x and the y coordinates.